So this is going to be an example of our value semantics, where um, in this case, every function is going to be operating on its own copy of the data to isolate that data and its mutations at a function level. Now, one other thing that I want to mention is this idea of pass by value. Regardless if we're using pointer semantics or we're using value semantics, everything is a pass by value. And pass by value literally means that whatever data we're passing from one function to the next, from one, from, in this case, it's better just think of one function to the next. Um, we're making a copy of it, and we're giving that function its own copy of that data. Now, there's two types of data, and that's the thing. There's the value itself and the value's address, and we'll see that in a second. So let's take a look at this function here. And if you notice in main, main is declaring a variable named count, and it's assigning it to this value of 10. So this is some state that this function needs in order to perform its job. And one of the things I do right away using the built-in function print line is we display the value of count and we display the address of count. Now, this ampersand is an operator. It's not, um, again, Go is not being novel. This, this has been stolen from many languages, C including. And what the address says is where a value is in memory. So we can use the value itself, and we would say value of where, what, what's in the box, right? If I, if I come to the board for a second, just to have some visualization on what we're doing. I declared a variable named count. And there's a value of 10. And so when we use the variable by itself, and we're saying value of, we're asking, you know, what's, what's in the box, right? I want to know about that. What's in the box? That's value of. But, and this is the data, right? There, there's two types of data, OK? There's the value itself. What's in the box? 10, the values of type it. The other type of data is an address. And it's data. And it's data that you can store. And so when we say ampersand count, what I'm not asking for is what's in the box. I'm asking for where. Where is the box? OK, it's got to be somewhere. And this is where we use those hexadecimal numbers. So maybe this is at FBC1. I'll use four out of the very large numbers, numbers we would need. And so the address is always going to be some hexadecimal number, which represents where a box is in memory. And the variable itself is about getting the value of what's in the box. And ampersand operates on that variable, and it says, where, where is the box? And we need to know where the box is if we're going to use a pointer semantics, because sharing that box is about moving the address of the box around our program, not the value itself. So if we come back to the code, we see on line 13 that I'm asking for the value of and the address of um, count using that ampersand, OK? And you can see here that um, the value of what's in the box is 10. And the address of is this long 64-bit uh, hexadecimal number or address, because we're on a 64-bit architecture right now. Just same one, basically, you're running at your desk, other than this being Linux. All right? So address of where is the box, value of what's in the box. Now, to continue this, I'm about to make another function call. And when I make function calls, I like to think about crossing over a program boundary, where every function executes in isolation from any other function that exists in the program. And we're going to isolate each function's execution or state that it needs 
in order to do its job. Which is why mechanically we're going to pass values into this function because if this function is operating within the scope of its own state, then you need to pass state in sometimes. And so what we're seeing on line 24 is that this function increment, in order for it to perform its work, it needs the caller to give it an integer. It needs to, give the, it needs to receive its own copy of that int where it's going to operate on that data in isolation. This is what's making it value semantic. And the whole idea of pass by value is that we can match this idea that on line 16, we're going to make a copy of the value of count. And we're going to assign that copy to this variable named inc. All right. So if we were to kind of look at that on the board, I mean, we're in, we're in function main. Oh, I got the wrong pen. We're in function main here. And remember, main you know, has its own kind of state. And it created a variable called count. And now we want to execute a function called increment. Well, increment also gets its own kind of state. And increment said, well, I need my own copy of this int that I'm going to call um, inc, and I can't produce that for myself. And this function says, no problem. We're a pass by value, so I'm going to get you a copy. And we're using our value semantics. So what this is saying is, increment is saying, I want to operate on my own copy. So every function you can imagine operating within the scope of its own little small state needs all of that input that it needs to operate on. Uh, within the scope of that small state. And in this case, increment is saying that I need my own copy of an integer. And the, the caller is providing that through the function call. So if we come back on line 16, we could see that what this is saying here mechanically is make a copy of count, what's in the box, and give that copy to increment and put that in increments box. And now you see the mutation operation on line 27 which is a plus plus operation. This operation is isolated to increment. We're getting that value semantic mutation. And it's, again, giving us these higher levels of integrity. And once we do that, Eric, come back to the board. What we've done is we've isolated that mutation here. And that mutation can only affect the increment function and nothing else. This is when we talk about those value semantics giving us this higher level of integrity because it isolates that mutation here. It's not application spread. And if we come back to the output, we can see that the value of uh, that count variable in the, in the main function is 10 at this address location of 32770. And then we passed in a copy of that into increment. And then we incremented it by 1. We can see the address of that changed. It's in a different location in memory. But when that function returns, when the increment function returns, we come back to main again. We're seeing line 18. We could see that we didn't touch main's value at all. It's still in that location, and it's been left alone. So this is our value semantics here. 